Now, ranking up there in conversations in cycling, along with gravel bikes and tyre pressures and widths, certainly has to be the one-by drivetrain system. What is that exactly then? Well, it's when you have a single chainring on the front of the bike, and then on the rear of the bike, you tend to have a wider range cassette. Uh, that's certainly for off-road applications. And then on a road bike, you can get away with a closer range, depending on obviously the terrain in which you're riding. Today, however, we're gonna look at how to hack your way to a one by drivetrain system. Now firstly, you are going to need to make up your mind if one by is definitely the way you want to go. Personally, I'm a little bit unsure of it, hence why I'm gonna hack my way to it today. Now you are going to need some special parts here, and obviously you are gonna need a bike as well as the components to turn it into a one by bike. Luckily, I've been digging around in the attic and I found a frame and also some old components there, so I'm good to go on this, but you can do it with an existing bike. How about then the special parts that you're gonna need? Well, firstly, you're gonna need one of these, which is a derailleur hanger extender, and that's gonna allow you to run a standard road rear mech using a wider spread ratio cassette, as opposed to a mountain bike rear derailleur, which does in fact have a longer cage and can accommodate those extra teeth on the cassette a lot easier. How does it work then? Well, it simply bolts onto your existing mech hanger and then you put on your current rear derailleur onto this thread instead. Now, no manufacturer out there actually recommends using these. And after all, this is the hack or maybe bodge version. So that's why we're gonna be using one of these today. So we want to make sure that chain stays on as good as possible. After all, this is the hack version rather than the perfect one. So uh, our mountain bike friends, well, they use narrow wide chain rings such as this to help keep the chain on because they're riding over really bumpy terrain. And obviously we're not using a clutch rear derailleur on our bike. So, well, we need every little extra, don't we, to keep that chain in place. How does it work then? Well. Every other tooth is narrow and every other tooth is wide. So that meshes in with the chain on your bike, which if you look at it from above, you'll notice that the plates are thinner and wider alternately as you go around the chain. So you need to make sure obviously that the narrowest one is on the narrowest tooth and the widest on the widest. Logical, right? Good, and you're still with me. So we also need to make sure that it fits on the chain set correctly. So in this case, I've really, really hacked this bike together. So I've got a Campagnolo group set and I'm actually gonna use a Shimano chain set, which I've had lying around in the workshop. So this one is gonna fit on it just perfectly using a 130 BCD. Now to attach that chain ring onto your chain set, well, I'm using a standard road double chain set. So normally you're gonna have an inside chain ring on there and obviously we're getting rid of that. So the chain ring bolts, you're actually gonna have a little bit of slack and that chain ring's not gonna be attached onto the spider perfectly. So in this case, I've actually got myself some shorter chain ring bolts. So something like you'd find on either a single speed or a BMX bike would be absolutely fine. Failing that, you could get yourself some quite thin washers and slide those over either the bolt or the nut and actually to take out that slack. Now for the cassette. This is where things do get a little bit more complicated because naturally I'm gonna be running a single ring at the front and I'm gonna need a wider spread ratio to get over any hills that I may well encounter. So in this case, I've opted for 11.32 because I've looked at my gear charts and I've figured that that paired up with a 50 tooth chain ring is fine for most things. So using this type of rear derailleur, which has a short cage, it isn't able to actually be able to accommodate the 32 tooth sprocket very well. In fact, it can't at all. Hence the reason why I will be fitting this derailleur hanger extension to get the rear mech just a couple of centimeters lower so that upper jockey wheel can clear the 32 tooth sprocket. And I reckon actually once I fit it, it's probably gonna be enough room for maybe even a 36 too. So, hey, if I'm gonna got the angler room, maybe that's the answer. 5036. Now it's time to just fit this narrow wide chain ring. So I'm gonna remove the existing chain rings using a five millimeter Allen key and one of these, which is a chain ring peg tool. Uh, now it simply slots into the rear of the nut to hold that in place. And then using a five millimeter Allen key, 
you release the actual bolt itself, saving you hopefully from skinned knuckles. So the final piece of the jigsaw is to fit your chain. So as you can see, I've just loosely put it in position. Uh, the narrow wide teeth of the chain ring there are matched in perfectly with the profile of the chain. Then on the rear, as you can see here, it's wrapped around that lowest cassette sprocket, so the 32 tooth. Now, the idea behind this, before I join it, I just want to actually make sure that the chain is the correct length. Too short, and the chain is obviously gonna be in a really extreme position, and too long, well, you're gonna run the risk of it actually coming off of the chain ring. So let's have a little cheeky look, and that looks absolutely spot on. So I'll get that joined up, and then we'll actually have a look at the chain and the chain line and see how secure it is on there. So there we are. It's actually ready to ride now. Obviously, I do have to put some proper pedals on and some handlebar tape. Uh, like I say, this was an absolute hack, which hence the reason why I've got a zip-tied outer gear cable on here because this frame is actually designed for DI2 only. So like I say, I made it out of bits and pieces found in my shed. Now, on initial look, um, the only thing I'm a little bit worried about is actually the tension on the chain because obviously it's not a clutch rear derailleur and I don't have a chain keeper deliberately installed because I just want to see how it does function. So there is a little bit of slack here. So when I'm out riding that first time, I am gonna to have to take it a little bit gentle just in case it does dislodge because who knows. Anyway, I will report back to you in due course and let you know how I get on. Now, I hope that you've enjoyed this. And also, if anyone at home has done a hack or a barge of a uh, one by drivetrain, do let me know because I'm very keen to read it. And has this maybe even inspired you to do similar? Let me know about that too. Now, do remember as well to like and share this video with your friends and also, don't forget to check out the GCN shop at shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com. And now for another great video, this time Sai showing you how to make your road bike into a gravel bike, click just down here.